Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Malka and today we're going to talk about Tisha B'Av. As Jews, we all know about Yom Kippur, this day where we're going to fast, where we're going to have atonement for our sins, and then we move on. But what about Tisha B'Av? We see some Jews with a gloomy face, some are crying, they're not wearing leather shoes, we see them fasting and spending their day in synagogue, and we hear they're mourning the destruction of the temples. But why are they doing all of this? Isn't the fast of Yom Kippur enough? In this video, we will answer all these questions and stay tuned until the end of the video to know what should you do to make this Tisha B'Av more than a fast day and for you to discover the tremendous transformative potential that Tisha B'Av will have on you. And if you like this kind of content all about simplifying and adding meaning to your Jewish life, please consider subscribing. So let's jump into it. The three weeks between the 17th of Tammuz and the 9th of Av are also known as Ben Amitzarim, and the traditions that we take during that period, not to have any weddings, no traveling, no buying of new items of value, all these traditions are there to decrease our merrymaking. These traditions will intensify in the last nine days of Av leading to Tisha B'Av. During that period, we will only take cold showers, we will wear pre-worn clothes, as well as we will refrain from eating meat. And finally, on the 9th of Av, we will fast, sit on the floor, say special prayers, weep, and mourn. But why do we have all these traditions? Because we want to feel that this period is different, that something is missing to raise our awareness of this lack in our life. It is a time of introspection, a time where we disconnect from our physical needs and reconnect with our spiritual one. These traditions and limitations are not an end, but a mean to raise our spiritual level and our connection with God. Why is the 9th of Av so special? First and foremost, time is not a series of accidents. Nothing is haphazardly happening in our life. The occurrence of a particular event on a specific date is more than a coincidence, particularly when that event is affecting the Jewish people. If miracles or calamities take place on a specific day, the event reveals something about the nature of the day itself. What happened on the 9th of Av? To understand this, we have to go back, way back, in 1312 BCE. After the exodus from Egypt, while the Jews were wandering in the desert, 12 spies were sent to report on the Promised Land, the land that was described by God as the land flowing with milk and honey, the land of Israel. Ten of the spies returned on the 9th of Av with negative reports. They said, sure enough, the land flows with milk and honey, but we cannot capture it. The nations who dwell there are strong, their cities are fortified, and they are giants amongst them. We are like grasshoppers to them. Cries of despair rang out from the camp. If only we had died in the land of Egypt, if only we had died in the desert. God declared, Who said you will perish if you go to Eris Israel? Because you see yourself as grasshoppers? Who said you are small? And who said you will die? And the Israel started to cry again. And God answered, You now are crying for nothing? Well, I will give you a reason to cry from generations to come. The ninth of Av will be for you a day of sorrow. Therefore, from that point on, on the ninth of Av, tragedies have happened throughout history, including the destruction of the first and second Beis Mikdash or temples. Now we know what is special about Tisha B'Av, we know why we have these traditions, but now why are we mourning a thing, a temple, or Beis Mikdash? What was so special about the temple? The temple, or Besamekdash, was where the presence of God resided on earth. Did you ever enter a place and you feel the power emanating from it? You feel the awe, the overflowing positive energy? That was how you felt when you entered the Besamekdash. Everything was pure. Everyone's sole purpose was to serve God in their capacity. Some priest or Kohanim would be preparing the offerings. Some would be lighting the golden menorah. All activities were centered around serving God. This place was also where you went if you did a misdeed. You would get atonement for it by offering a sacrifice. 
this house of God represented the potential to always do better, to have a new start, as well as to reaffirm our connection to God. When the basement dish was destroyed, we lost all that potential of realizing ourselves and getting closer to God. We are missing the possibility to be our true self, our best self, connected with our ultimate inner goal to get closer to God and connect with Him. What are we mourning? We are mourning over ourselves. Each of us, if we only gave it a little thought, we would realize how distant we are from realizing our potential, whether in the area of Torah study and performing acts of kindness, of chesed. Ultimately, Tisha B'Av is the day where we mourn for all that we could have done, all the potential that we let go, all the times we could have, but we just didn't try enough. The times that we did not believe that everything that comes from God is good, all the time that we lack faith in our God-given potential, in our abilities to be a better spouse, a better friend, a better giver. As Jews, we pray every day for the ultimate redemption, the coming of Mashiach or the Messiah and the rebuilding of the third Beis HaMikdash. But the redemption and the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash are not depending exclusively to our mourning over them during the period of Ben Amitzarim, or they are not exclusively dependent on our mourning simply on the 9th of Av. Rabbi Naftali of Ropshitz taught us that with every mitzvah we perform and with every improvement in our connection to God, we bring the final redemption that much closer. Every day we perform mitzvot or good deeds properly. We provide a little of the building material for the true Yerushalayim to be built. Hence, day by day, we are building the Beis HaMikdash in Shemayim through our positive actions toward ourselves, others, and towards God. Some of us will provide the material for part of a brick and some will provide rows of bricks, but every one contribution to the building of the Beis HaMikdash through their good deeds or mitzvot and their connection to God is essential. These actions to grow closer to each other and to God do not need to be grand. It can simply be to be more patient with people around you, more forgiving, praying with someone or praying for someone who is going through hardship, lighting candles on Shabbat or any other mitzvot. This Tisha B'Av, let's realize that we can become Shalem, complete, and realize our true potential. Let's not listen to our inner spies and let's not stop ourselves with false tears of doubt. And let's bring the redemption now through our willingness to let God be at the center of our lives and make every moment part of our personal contribution to the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash. So my question to you is, what are you going to take upon yourself this Tisha B'Av and going forward to bring closer and closer the redemption? Is it going to be to be more patient with your children? Maybe it's going to study just a bit more. Maybe it's going to participate in group like partners in Torah to learn more Torah. Whatever it is, let's be accountable. Write in the comments below what are you going to take upon yourself and let's bring Mashiach now. And if you like this kind of content all about simplifying and adding meaning to your Jewish life, please consider subscribing. We upload new content every week. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up.